born with caudal regression syndrome. It is a very rare disease. One out of every 100,000 kids are born with it each year. My dreams and ambitions, one day to make the Olympic team be one of the best uh, freestyle wrestlers in the world. Did you know that some people live exceptional lives that push the limits of what we consider normal? From rare diseases that make bones break to an unusual condition that causes an allergy to water, join us as we explore the fascinating world of 10 unusual and remarkable people with very rare diseases. Number 10, Zion Clark. Zion Clark's story is one of incredible determination, marked by his battle with a rare and challenging condition known as caudal regression syndrome. Born on September 29, 1997, in Columbus, Ohio, Zion Clark's early life was fraught with difficulties. From birth, he faced significant health challenges that would shape his journey in extraordinary ways. Caudal regression syndrome, a rare condition that causes a loss of motor skills and physical development, left Zion without the use of his lower limbs. The syndrome, which affects the development of the spinal cord and nervous system, resulted in Zion being born with a condition where his legs and feet were severely underdeveloped, leaving him without the ability to walk. This was compounded by other physical challenges that he would have to overcome throughout his life. Despite these significant obstacles, Zion's spirit remained uncrushed. He was placed in foster care early in his life, where he faced the additional challenge of adapting to a new environment while dealing with his physical limitations. Zion's adoptive parents, who saw beyond his condition and recognized his potential, provided him with the love and support he needed to thrive. Growing up, Zion did not let his condition define his limits. He became a formidable athlete, excelling in various sports, particularly wrestling. His story gained widespread attention when he competed in high school wrestling, where his incredible strength and agility defied the expectations often associated with his condition. In addition to wrestling, Zion is also a motivational speaker. His journey has inspired many, as he shares his story of overcoming adversity and pushing past limitations. His speeches and public appearances emphasize the importance of perseverance, self-belief, and the power of support from loved ones. Zion uses his platform to advocate for individuals with disabilities, encouraging them to pursue their dreams despite the obstacles they may face. Zion continues to break barriers and challenge perceptions, demonstrating that with determination and support, one can achieve remarkable feats regardless of the obstacles presented by rare diseases like caudal regression syndrome. Number 9. Levi Levi's story is a compelling narrative of rare medical conditions and the impact of connection and support. Levi, a young boy with Janssen's metaphyseal chondrodysplasia, is one of only 22 people worldwide diagnosed with this extremely rare form of dwarfism. This condition disrupts the normal development of bones, particularly affecting the arms and legs. The result is a distinct and challenging physical growth pattern that influences both mobility and overall growth. Levi's journey took a significant turn when he had the opportunity to meet two other children with the same diagnosis. Arshan and Jahan Adam, like Levi, are also affected by Janssen's metaphyseal chondrodysplasia. The chance encounter was facilitated by Nemours Alfred Hospital for Children, where these children receive specialized care under the guidance of Dr. William McKenzie, a renowned pediatric orthopedic surgeon. This meeting was not just a medical consultation, but a milestone in Levi's life. For Levi, meeting Arshan and Jahan was a transformative experience. Seeing other children with the same condition offered him a sense of solidarity and understanding that is difficult to come by in the world of rare diseases. The rarity of Janssen's metaphyseal chondrodysplasia means that finding others with similar experiences is rare and the emotional and psychological support that comes from such meetings can be invaluable. During his visit to the hospital, Levi, along with Arshan and Jahan, participated in consultations and evaluations that provided insights into their condition and potential management strategies. For Levi and his family, 
This meeting was a significant reassurance that they are not alone in their journey and that there is a community of support and expertise available to them. Levi's story, marked by his rare condition and the supportive network around him, exemplifies the importance of specialized medical care and the emotional strength that comes from shared experiences. Number eight, Larry Gomez. Larry Gomez has a rare genetic condition known as hypertrichosis, often referred to as werewolf syndrome due to its dramatic effects on appearance. Hypertrichosis is characterized by an abnormal amount of hair growth over much of the body, and Larry's case is particularly striking. From a young age, Larry Gomez, who hails from Texas, exhibited an extensive and unusual growth of hair covering his entire body. This condition, which has earned its nickname due to the resemblance to mythical werewolves, results in hair growth that extends beyond normal patterns. Larry's hair is notably thick and coarse, covering not only his arms and legs, but also his face, back, and torso. This extensive hair growth is a visible hallmark of his condition, which has become an integral part of his identity. Hypertrichosis can be congenital, as in Larry's case, or acquired later in life due to certain medical conditions or treatments. In congenital hypertrichosis, the excessive hair growth is present from birth and is caused by genetic mutations. For Larry, this condition is hereditary and he is not alone in his struggle. Many members of his family also have hypertrichosis, making it a prominent feature of their lineage. This genetic aspect highlights the role of inheritance in the condition, with multiple generations experiencing similar symptoms. Larry's appearance has made him a subject of fascination and often unwanted attention. Despite the challenges he faces, including social stigma and practical difficulties associated with excessive hair growth, Larry has shown great courage. He has become an advocate for understanding and acceptance, using his platform to educate others about hypertrichosis and dispel myths associated with the condition. The daily management of hypertrichosis can be challenging. People with this condition often undergo regular grooming and shaving to manage the hair growth and maintain comfort. For Larry, this has involved frequent trips to the barber and various hair removal techniques. Despite these challenges, Larry has maintained a positive outlook and has embraced his unique appearance. Hypertrichosis is an extremely rare condition with only a few documented cases worldwide. The condition's rarity and the dramatic nature of its symptoms contribute to its mystique and the public's fascination. Larry's story brings attention to the broader issues faced by individuals with rare genetic conditions, including the need for empathy and understanding. Number seven, Johnny Kennedy. Johnny Kennedy, often referred to as the Butterfly Child, was born on January 31st, 1966 in the United Kingdom. Johnny was diagnosed with a severe form of epidermolysis bullosa, a rare genetic disorder characterized by extreme skin fragility. The condition causes the skin to blister and peel at the slightest touch, leading to severe pain and vulnerability to infections. Epidermolysis bullosa is caused by mutations in the genes responsible for producing proteins that help bind the layers of the skin together. This genetic defect means that the skin is unable to adhere properly, making it extraordinarily sensitive to friction and trauma. There are several forms of epidermolysis bullosa, ranging from mild to severe, and Johnny had one of the most severe types, known as recessive dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa. From birth, Johnny's skin was prone to developing painful blisters and wounds. Everyday activities that most people take for granted, such as dressing, bathing, and even movement, could cause his skin to break down. The constant need for wound care and the risk of infections meant that Johnny's life was marked by frequent hospital visits and medical interventions. His condition required meticulous care to prevent infections and manage the severe pain he experienced. Despite the hardships of living with such a debilitating condition, Johnny was known for his resilient and optimistic spirit. He became a public figure and advocate for those suffering from epidermolysis bullosa, sharing his experiences to raise awareness about the condition. 
Johnny's story was brought into the public eye through media coverage, including television documentaries, which helped highlight the struggles and needs of individuals with epidermolysis bullosa. Johnny's personal life was marked by his close-knit family, who played a crucial role in his care and support. His parents, John and Sue Kennedy, dedicated themselves to managing his complex medical needs and providing emotional support. They were actively involved in fundraising and advocacy efforts aimed at improving the quality of life for those with epidermolysis bullosa and supporting research for potential treatments. One of the most notable aspects of Johnny's legacy is his role in fostering awareness about epidermolysis bullosa. His story inspired many to learn more about the condition and to contribute to research and support organizations dedicated to epidermolysis bullosa. Despite the physical challenges he faced, Johnny's advocacy and public presence brought attention to the need for better treatments and support for people with rare genetic disorders. Johnny Kennedy passed away on September 10, 2003, at the age of 37. His life, marked by both immense suffering and remarkable courage, left a lasting impact on the world of medical advocacy and rare diseases. Number 6. J.T. Barofka when J.T. Barofka was just five months old, his life took a dramatic turn with a diagnosis of a rare metabolic condition known as triosophosphate isomerase, TPI deficiency. This disease, a result of a genetic mutation affecting the TPI enzyme, disrupts a crucial part of glycolysis, the primary energy production pathway in the body. The enzyme's destabilization and degradation lead to severe, progressive neuromuscular degeneration and lifelong anemia. Tragically, most children with TPI deficiency do not survive past the age of five. JT's parents, Tara and Jason Barofka, had been worried about their son's health since he turned pale at just two months old. Despite numerous visits to doctors, they struggled to find a diagnosis until JT was five months old. The revelation of TPI deficiency was a devastating blow. Tara recalls a doctor expressing that he would rather deliver the news of cancer than this rare condition, highlighting the severity and bleak prognosis associated with TPI deficiency. With the diagnosis in hand, the Barofkas sought out help from Michael Palladino, a professor of pharmacology and chemical biology at the University of Pittsburgh. Palladino's research focuses on TPI deficiency making him one of the few experts in the field. He had identified a mutant fruit fly, the only existing animal model for this condition, and was working to discover drug targets that could potentially aid in producing the TPI enzyme. This early identification of the disease in JT was promising as Palladino's research indicated that if an effective drug could be found among the 2000 FDA-approved drugs, it could be used to help JT almost immediately. However, Securing adequate funding for this research remained a significant challenge. Determined to make a difference, the Barofkas, both professional anglers from Salinas, California, took on the task of raising funds for Palladino's research. They set a goal to raise $1 million and committed to organizing fundraisers every weekend if necessary. Their efforts have already raised $200,000, which has been channeled directly into Palladino's research through a fund established by the University of Pittsburgh. Palladino commends the Barofkas for their dedication and effectiveness as advocates. Their experience in media and social media as professional anglers has been instrumental in their fundraising efforts. Meanwhile, JT, who is now over a year old, has shown resilience and remains relatively healthy. Thanks to early genetic screening, his condition was identified before the onset of severe neurological symptoms. He is currently following a special diet similar to the keto diet, which has helped slow the progression of his symptoms. Tara Barofka expresses hope for JT's future, envisioning a positive outcome if Palladino's research yields a successful drug. JT's joy in simple activities, like sitting in a car and holding the steering wheel, brings light to his family's life. With ongoing research and fundraising, there is hope that JT might defy the odds and lead a fulfilling life, potentially even dreaming of becoming a race car driver someday. Number 5. Ivy Angerman 
Born in Hastings, Minnesota, Ivy was just a toddler when her parents, Dan and Brittany Angerman, noticed something strange happening to her skin every time she came into contact with water. What seemed to be a normal bath time routine quickly turned into a nightmare when Ivy's skin began to develop painful hives and rashes, accompanied by intense itching and burning sensations. After several visits to doctors and specialists, Ivy was diagnosed with aquagenic urticaria, a condition so rare that only about 100 people worldwide are known to have it. Aquagenic urticaria is a type of physical allergy in which contact with water, regardless of its temperature, triggers a severe allergic reaction on the skin. For Ivy, this meant that even the smallest exposure to water, whether from bathing, swimming, or even sweating, could lead to unbearable pain and discomfort. The diagnosis was devastating for Ivy's family. They had to come to terms with the fact that their little girl could no longer enjoy many of the simple pleasures that most children take for granted. Activities like playing in the rain, swimming, or even crying became dangerous for Ivy. Her condition required her to avoid water as much as possible, which significantly affected her day-to-day -day life. To manage Ivy's condition, her parents had to make significant adjustments to their routines and home environment. Bathing had to be done sparingly and quickly, with special care taken to ensure that Ivy's skin was moisturized immediately afterward to prevent flare-ups. The family also had to be cautious about the weather, as even a humid day or a light drizzle could trigger Ivy's symptoms. The Angermans worked closely with dermatologists and allergists to find treatments that could help alleviate Ivy's discomfort. But managing aquagenic urticaria remains a daily challenge. Despite the difficulties, Ivy's story has also become one of hope and inspiration. Her family has been active in raising awareness about aquagenic urticaria, sharing their experiences with the public to help others understand the impact of this rare condition. Their efforts have not only brought attention to the challenges faced by those living with aquagenic urticaria, but have also provided support to other families dealing with similar rare diseases. As Ivy grows older, her family continues to advocate for research into aquagenic urticaria, hoping that one day, a cure or more effective treatment will be found. In the meantime, they remain committed to giving Ivy as normal a life as possible. Number four, Deja and Antoine. Deja and Antoine are a remarkable couple whose lives are intertwined by their shared experience with osteogenesis imperfecta, also known as OI, a rare genetic disorder characterized by fragile bones that break easily. Both individuals have faced significant challenges due to their condition, but their journey together highlights love and mutual support. Deja, born in 1991, was diagnosed with osteogenesis imperfecta at a young age. Her life has been marked by frequent fractures and orthopedic issues, requiring numerous surgeries and adaptations to daily activities. Despite these challenges, Deja has demonstrated a remarkable strength of character. She pursued her education with determination and has been an advocate for others with OI, using her experiences to raise awareness about the condition and to promote better support and resources for those affected. Antoine, born in 1988, also lives with osteogenesis imperfecta. Like Deja, he has dealt with the physical and emotional toll of the disorder experiencing frequent bone fractures and requiring specialized medical care. Antoine has channeled his experiences into advocacy work, striving to improve the lives of people with OI through community outreach and support initiatives. His commitment to raising awareness about the condition has been a significant part of his life. The paths of Deja and Antoine crossed in an online support group for individuals with osteogenesis imperfecta. Both were active participants in discussions about living with OI, sharing their experiences, and supporting one another through the challenges they faced. Over time, their online interactions developed into a deep and meaningful connection. Their shared understanding of the daily realities of living with OI created a strong bond, and their relationship gradually evolved from virtual support to a real-life romance. When Deja and Antoine first met in person, 
Their connection was immediately evident. They found solace and understanding in each other's company, sharing a unique perspective on the challenges of their condition. Their relationship has been characterized by mutual support, empathy, and a shared commitment to advocating for people with osteogenesis imperfecta. As a couple, Deja and Antoine have been involved in various advocacy and support activities. They have worked together to raise awareness about osteogenesis imperfecta, participating in events, speaking engagements, and fundraising efforts. Their partnership has provided them with a unique platform to highlight the issues faced by individuals with OI and to promote greater understanding and support. All right, guys, it's time for our subscribers pick. When this picture first surfaced online, it immediately sparked concern and curiosity. People began wondering if this is a real boy with a genuine health condition. The image shows a figure covered in what looks like barnacles or some other strange growth leading to speculation about whether this could be an actual human condition. If this is a health condition, what could it possibly be? Despite all the buzz, there is no clear answer yet, and researchers are still trying to figure out what it might be. But what do you think? Could this be real? Or is it just a piece of artwork designed to make us think? What kind of disease do you think it might be, if it's real? Share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section. Number three, Gail and Tim. Gail and Tim are a couple whose lives have been profoundly affected by neurofibromatosis, NF, a group of genetic disorders that cause tumors to grow on nerves. Neurofibromatosis comes in three types, NF1, NF2, and schwannomatosis, each with its own set of challenges. Gail and Tim both have NF1, which is the most common form of the condition, characterized by the growth of benign tumors on nerves, skin changes, and bone abnormalities. Gail was diagnosed with NF1 at a young age. As she grew up, she experienced symptoms including cafe au lait spots, pigmented skin lesions that are often one of the first signs of NF1 and neurofibromas, which are benign tumors that developed under her skin. These tumors, while non-cancerous, can cause discomfort and pain, and in some cases, they can lead to complications if they grow large or affect vital organs. Gail has undergone several surgeries to remove problematic tumors and to manage pain. Additionally, she has faced challenges related to learning disabilities, a common issue for individuals with NF1, which has required specialized educational support. Tim's experience with NF1 has been similarly challenging. Diagnosed in childhood, Tim has dealt with multiple neurofibromas that have affected his quality of life. The condition has also led to frequent medical appointments and treatments to manage the symptoms and complications. Tim has experienced issues with chronic pain and has had to adapt his daily activities to accommodate his condition. Despite these difficulties, Tim has been active in advocating for NF awareness and support using his experiences to help others understand the impact of the condition. Gail and Tim met through a support group for people with neurofibromatosis. Their shared experiences with the condition created an immediate bond, and they found solace in understanding each other's challenges. Their relationship evolved from friendship to a deep and supportive partnership. Both Gail and Tim find comfort in knowing that they are not alone in their struggles, and their mutual support has been a cornerstone of their relationship. Together, they have navigated the complexities of living with NF1. They have supported each other through numerous medical procedures, shared their experiences to educate others about the condition, and worked to improve their quality of life. Their relationship is marked by a shared commitment to managing their health while maintaining a positive outlook. Managing neurofibromatosis involves regular medical checkups to monitor the growth of tumors and other symptoms. Treatments may include surgery to remove tumors, medication to manage pain, and therapies to address any learning or developmental issues. Both Gail and Tim are proactive about their health care, working closely with their medical teams to manage their condition effectively. Number 2. Nova Cox Born with Pfeiffer Syndrome, 
a rare genetic disorder affecting skull bone growth, Nova Cox's early life has been a series of medical milestones and remarkable adaptations. Pfeiffer syndrome, classified as a type of craniosynostosis, caused the premature fusion of the bones in Nova's head, particularly affecting her mid-face and upper jaw. This condition led to significant developmental challenges, including a fused skull and the misalignment of her facial bones. The impact on her physical development has been profound. Nova's face and head grew in ways that made her condition increasingly apparent as she aged. From the moment she was born, Nova faced a whirlwind of medical interventions. Her first five weeks were spent in the neonatal intensive care unit, where she received critical care and underwent her initial surgeries. By just 16 days old, she had already begun a series of operations aimed at relieving pressure and correcting bone positioning. These surgeries were essential to manage the fusion of her skull bones and to make space for her growing brain. Nova's condition also brought other challenges. The fusion of her elbows prevented her arms from bending, complicating her mobility. However, her adaptability and the support from modern adaptive devices have allowed her to navigate these challenges with surprising dexterity. Despite her limitations, she has demonstrated remarkable skill with her shoulders and wrists. Hearing loss and dental issues are additional hurdles Nova faces. The misalignment of her upper and lower teeth makes chewing difficult, and a planned mid-face advancement surgery will address this, aiming to reposition her facial bones to improve function and appearance. This surgery will also potentially allow for the reversal of her tracheotomy, which will facilitate easier eating and speaking. The Cox family has been proactive in seeking treatment and support for Nova. With the help of pediatric geneticist Mary Alice Abbott, they have learned that Nova's condition is a genetic anomaly, with a 50% chance of being passed on to future generations. This knowledge has been both a relief and a point of reflection for the Coxes, helping them prepare for Nova's future and any potential challenges. Elizabeth Cox hopes that Craniofacial Acceptance Month will foster greater understanding and acceptance of craniofacial differences. She emphasizes that physical differences are just that, differences, not deficiencies. Her hope is for people to see beyond Nova's appearance and recognize her for who she truly is. Number one, Abdul Banjadar. Abul Bajandar, known as the Tree Man from Bangladesh, has captured global attention due to his extraordinary and painful condition, Epiderma dysplasia verusiformis. This rare disorder causes massive warts to grow on his hands, feet, arms, and legs, with the texture and appearance of tree bark. The warts are particularly pronounced around his fingers and toes, forming huge protuberances that severely affect his daily life. With fewer than 10 documented cases worldwide, Epiderma dysplasia verusiformis is an exceptionally rare condition, and currently, there is no known cure. Abul's life has been dramatically impacted by his condition. For years, the massive warts made it impossible for him to perform basic tasks, let alone hold his daughter, Janatul. The growths not only caused immense physical pain, but also led to significant emotional and psychological distress. His inability to embrace his child was a constant source of heartbreak. Before gaining international attention, Abul Bajandar was living a life of extreme hardship. The severe appearance of his condition led to him becoming a spectacle in his local community, where he was reduced to begging on the streets of Kulna. People would take photographs with him, treating him like a curiosity and leaving him with just a few coins in exchange. Abul described this experience as dehumanizing, likening himself to a monkey in a zoo. The turning point in Abul's life came when his story went viral, bringing his plight to the attention of the global community. The increased awareness led to significant support, allowing him to receive medical treatment. This breakthrough was life-changing. For the first time, Abul was able to hold his daughter an emotional milestone he had long dreamed of. Despite the initial success of the treatments, Abul's relief was short-lived. The warts, 
which had been reduced through medical intervention, began to grow back, and they did so with renewed intensity. The resurgence of the growths was even more severe than before, bringing back the unbearable pain and challenges he had faced previously. The condition, without a known cure, continued to dominate his life, posing ongoing difficulties in managing his symptoms and maintaining a semblance of normalcy. Abul's journey was from a life of suffering to a brief period of hope and back to renewed challenges. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching.